In the realm of classic cinema, the story of Vernon and Irene Castle stands as a captivating piece from the year 1939. This cinematic gem, directed by H.C. Potter, recounts the real-life story of the legendary dance duo Vernon and Irene Castle during the early 20th century. As we delve into this timeless narrative, one can't help but wonder, out of the myriad roles portrayed on screen, which one resonated with you the most. Before we explore personal preferences, let's unravel some lesser-known facts about this cinematic creation. Did you know that the film captures the essence of the castle's remarkable rise to fame as pioneering figures in the world of ballroom dance? The subtle nuances and anecdotes woven into the narrative provide a fascinating glimpse into a bygone era. Now, as you reflect on this cinematic journey, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the story of Vernon and Irene Castle. Was it a particular scene that left an indelible mark, or perhaps a connection to the characters that resonated with your own life? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. What role captivated you, and are there any untold tales about the film that fascinate you? Share your thoughts, and let's celebrate the enduring legacy of this cinematic masterpiece. In the story of Vernon and Irene Castle, released in 1939, the portrayal of Irene Castle differs significantly from her real-life persona. Despite the meek image on screen, Irene was known for her outspoken and independent personality off-screen. Notably, she took on swashbuckling action roles in films like Patriot, similar to Douglas Fairbanks. Beyond acting, Irene Castle was a pioneering entrepreneur, designing her own costumes and skillfully crafting her public image, transforming herself into a household brand. The film marks the last collaboration between Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers for a decade until the Barclays of Broadway. Astaire, however, expressed disappointment with the story of Vernon and Irene Castle, believing it failed to capture the carefree spirit of the ragtime era. Additionally, the movie holds the distinction of being the final film for Roy D'Arcy, known for portraying screen villains during the silent era. His extensive filmography included notable works like The Merry Widow, Forbidden Hours, The Black Watch, and Bardley's The Magnificent. These facts add layers to the historical significance of the story of Vernon and Irene Castle, showcasing the contrast between on-screen portrayals and the real lives of the characters involved, as well as marking pivotal moments in the careers of Astaire, Rogers, and D'Arcy. Irene Castle's role as a technical advisor for the 1939 film The Story of Vernon and Irene Castle had more behind-the-scenes impact than meets the eye. Despite her expertise, tensions arose between Castle and Ginger Rogers, who portrayed Irene on screen. Castle disapproved of every costume Rogers wore, deeming them anachronistic. Due to censorship restrictions, Rogers' outfits reflected 1930s fashion rather than the bold styles of Castle's 1,910 seconds era. When Rogers refused to cut her hair to replicate Castle's iconic bob, Castle's dissatisfaction escalated. The studio, eager to maintain harmony, quelled Castle's objections with a $5,000 payment. This clash between technical accuracy and studio compromises sheds light on the intricacies of bringing historical figures to life on the silver screen. The struggle to balance authenticity with commercial considerations is evident, even in seemingly trivial details like costumes and hairstyles. The behind-the-scenes negotiations and compromises not only impacted the visual portrayal but also revealed the challenges faced by actors and technical advisors in navigating the demands of both historical accuracy and cinematic appeal. In a unique twist, Irene Castle's role as a technical advisor, meant to ensure accuracy, became a battleground where the realities of 1,910 seconds fashion clashed with the constraints of 1930s filmmaking. This tension adds a layer of complexity to the historical significance of the story of Vernon and Irene Castle, showcasing the delicate dance between authenticity and cinematic pragmatism. Such behind-the-scenes stories, often overshadowed by on-screen glamour, offer a glimpse into the intricate web of decision-making that shapes the final cinematic product. Following the closing credits, a disclaimer notes that while the film draws inspiration from real events and individuals, much of it is fictional. This sets the stage for a nuanced exploration of the 1939 movie The Story of Vernon 
and Irene Castle, where historical accuracy intersects with creative liberties. Amidst the behind-the-scenes intricacies, it's revealed that Irene Castle, the technical advisor for the film, held mixed sentiments. While vehemently opposing Ginger Rogers as her on-screen persona, Irene surprisingly approved of Fred Astaire's portrayal of Vernon Castle. According to her, Astaire's mastery in dance and his seamless fit into Vernon's old uniforms earned him accolades. However, the clash between Irene Castle and Rogers extended beyond casting preferences. Discontent with the anachronistic costumes and a refusal to replicate Irene's iconic bob, tensions reached a point where the studio intervened with a $5,000 payment to pacify Castle. This negotiation sheds light on the challenges faced in balancing historical authenticity with cinematic pragmatism. Notably, French singer Jean Sablon's rejection of a role, despite his voice being used on the soundtrack, adds another layer to the film's dynamics. The interplay of cast choices, technical decisions, and compromises behind the scenes unveils the intricate web of decision-making that shapes the final cinematic product. In conclusion, the story of Vernon and Irene Castle, beyond its on-screen narrative, is a tapestry woven with conflicts, compromises, and unexpected approvals. The film stands as a testament to the delicate dance between historical accuracy and cinematic demands, offering a unique perspective into the complexities of bringing real-life stories to the silver screen. Blonde-haired Ginger Rogers stepped into the role of brunette Irene Castle in the 1939 film, The Story of Vernon and Irene Castle. However, authenticity clashed with cinematic demands as Rogers adamantly refused to alter her hair or adopt the iconic bob that defined Castle's look. Insisting on a contemporary 1939 hairstyle, Rogers' decision deviated from the factual portrayal of Irene Castle's distinctive image seen in earlier films like The World of Life. This stylistic deviation became a point of contention between Irene Castle and the production team. Irene Castle, a fashion trendsetter known for her short boyish bob, found fault not just with Rogers' hairstyle but also with the film's wardrobe choices. Castle, with her background in designing costumes, criticized the dresses, hairstyles, and shoes featured in the movie. This clash extended beyond a mere stylistic disagreement, revealing the complexities of balancing historical accuracy with the practicalities of filmmaking. The tension escalated as Castle disapproved of every costume Rogers wore, deeming them anachronistic. The clash of opinions reached a point where the studio intervened, offering a $5,000 payment to pacify Castle and maintain harmony on set. This behind-the-scenes conflict sheds light on the intricate negotiations required to bring historical figures to life on the silver screen. In conclusion, the portrayal of Irene Castle in the story of Vernon and Irene Castle reflects not just the clash between on-screen depictions and real-life personas, but also the challenges faced in achieving authenticity while navigating the demands of cinematic appeal. The film becomes a canvas where historical accuracy and stylistic pragmatism engage in a delicate dance, offering a unique perspective into the complexities of bringing real-life stories to the silver screen. As the credits roll and the curtain falls on the timeless tale of Vernon and Irene Castle, we invite you to step into the waltz of your own memories. The story of Vernon and Irene Castle, a cinematic masterpiece crafted in the bygone days of 1939, is more than celluloid and black and white. It's a journey through time, a dance with the echoes of the past that lingers in the heart. Now, dear friend, let the melodies of this enchanting narrative resonate within you. Reflect on the elegance of the ballroom, the grace of the dancers, and the subtle chemistry that transcends the silver screen. What chord does it strike in your soul? Does it awaken the nostalgia of an era you never knew, or perhaps does it mirror the timeless elegance you cherish? We urge you to share the dance floor of your thoughts. Whether it's a cherished scene, a poignant line, or the subtle nuances that etch the film in your memory, let your voice join the ensemble. In this vast ballroom of cinematic experiences, your perspective is a unique dance, a step that adds to the richness of the collective narrative. As we close this chapter and draw the curtain, we extend our deepest gratitude to you for sharing this dance through time. Your presence in this cinematic waltz is a testament to the enduring magic of the story of Vernon and Irene Castle. We eagerly await the rhythm of your reflections. Thank you for your time, your thoughts, and your dance in this cinematic waltz. Until our next rendezvous in the realms of storytelling, keep the magic alive.